Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Kabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet, what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. Here we are with Kat Roten. We met at the Promotional Products Expo conference earlier this year. And I'm so stoked to speak with Kat and share this conversation with you guys. Because mainly one of the things I talk about most about a spiritual awakening process and the unfolding is a career transition. And unfortunately, there's no real good blueprint out there about this career transition, yet the number one theme I see for spiritual awakening processes is a career transition is looming. So with that said, Kat, welcome to the Soul Seeker Show. I'm so stoked to have you here. I'm so excited to be here, Sam. Thank you so much for having me. You got it. We're literally what, uh, day number two into your entrepreneurship journey. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Day number two, all but all in now. <laughs> So let's unpack this. Let's imagine that we're just meeting in an elevator and you're describing what the past uh, several years of your life as it relates to your career has been and how you got here. Uh, we only have a couple minutes in this elevator. So what? how would you unpack that for someone that you would just be meeting and passing like that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think the best way to come about is... I spent 10 years, so a decade in hotels and in around 2022, end of the year, something didn't feel right. I just felt off. I didn't have the same passion, the same excitement that I used to. And I started diving into the world of podcasting and listening to it, uh, personal development, hadn't even heard of what breath work really was, what um, in general, just these different events and these different opportunities to really dive into the, and do the inner work. And within about a year, so by end of last year, 2023, I had attended a multiple different events, one really focusing on how many different opportunities there were to start listening to your body and turning inward and what your body is saying and speaking to you. And I'd never heard of Reiki, inner child work, and all of this words were being thrown out at the event. And I was like, this is interesting. Like I'm finally out of hotels. I have a little bit more time for myself, but I'm still doing what I love, which is at events. But I had never thought of what did I really want to do? I've always done what everyone else had been telling me to. And so when I started to turn inward and I started journaling, I started doing breath work. I started spending time with a life coach who was able to help me work through some of these different practices. It came about that I'm not doing what I want to do. And I was doing it for everyone else. So what made me happy? And I'm still figuring that out. <laughs> That's been the biggest thing is I don't know exactly. I just knew people telling me what to do and was not where I wanted to be. And it was not aligning with anything that made me happy and excited. So I have now completely left hotels. I have compl completely left the corporate world. And here I am in entrepreneurship trying to figure out what this next business really looks like for me, not everybody else. Let's go. Yeah, that's it right there for you, not everyone else. I think a lot of us can really relate, whether it's in our careers or jobs or just our life in general, of showing up and 
the way that we think we're supposed to show up and it's doing all the things that we think is going to make us happy. And then some point, if we're on this path, this journey of the awakening unfolding, we start to realize I never really wanted that. You know, I was just doing all those things. So for you, you said that you were in corporate and hotels for how long was it? 10 years? 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, that's a long time. And doing uh, what exactly in hotels, events for conferences? Everything. I was in housekeeping for a couple of years, front office for a few years, events for a few years. I ran a whole property. So mm. I saw maintenance, food and beverage, things I'd never had seen before and the craziness of that. So I saw it all. <laughs> so you probably don't know this about me, and I'm sure a lot of the listeners don't either, but I was actually a recreation major at Chico State, and I imagine your major was something similar. Hospitality. Hospitality, Hospital. restaurant, and tourism management. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The different like options we had within recreation, uh, hospitality and hotel management, and all that was one of the options. So I had to take one of those classes and I learned about hotels and hotel management. I had a lot of friends go that route. My option within recreation was community and commercial, which I really liked because like the community side was basically like parks and recreation, that type of stuff. And then the commercial was pretty much a service-based business. So it was like a business class, uh, a business uh, degree with not the heaviness of business, uh, more recreation-based. Um, so yeah, having said that, I, I remember my hotel class. I actually still, I graduated about 14 years ago or so. And I still keep in touch with my professor from the hotel class. I actually just saw him when I was up in that area last year for a speaking gig, but, but that's, that's neither. Awesome. Nor there. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Morgan Getty. I remember uh, I would go. So this is Chico, California, big party school it used to be like, you know, Playboy's number one party school back in the day. And we were still really big when I was there at uh, party school. And I lived above the most popular bar in town or top frat did the whole thing. I'd show up to class and board shorts and sandals. And this professor, the hotel management one, he'd always give me a hard time. Like, well, where, where's the beach? There's no beach here. Why are you wearing board shorts and sandals? And I remember I'd be like, I'm hitting the lake after this. I'm going wakeboarding, you know, or just the slip and slides, whatever, all the party town type stuff. Anyways, that's fun to go down memory lane. So 10 years of hotel management, like that, that's a lot to unpack there. That is a lot of over overwhelm. It's a lot of stress. It's a lot of anxiety. How did you really manage your nervous system. And I can imagine what you're going to say, but like, just walk us through what it looks like. Did you just it literally avoid how you were feeling? Or did you know how you're feeling? If you could speak to that a bit. Yeah, uh, I didn't manage it. So that's probably what you're expecting me to say <laughs> yeah. at all. Didn't even know what regulating your nervous system was. I so I went straight in after college. I was in a management training program with Marriott, actually, is where I started in hotels. Um, I mean, I guess I worked also during college, but that was different. But as soon as I got in, I was working anywhere from 12 to 16 hour days. And Ooh. I, I mean, sleep, breathe, like that's what I was, was hotels. And the beginning, I would say probably my first two years was a little more manageable. And then by the time... I got into opening a property and then I was managing an entire boutique property by myself. I did not know what life was like outside of work and where I really dived into and a few, there's two different paths I take and I explain to people and it really is my backstory and I'm very open about it. One was working out. So I was, I didn't realize how over I was doing it. I was doing it too much, but that was my fallback. I would get two, three hours of sleep, get up, work out for an hour and a half, go to work for 16 hours a day. I mean, that literally was how I was managing. That's I just nuts. Was, oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. And then after doing two years of that, three years, realizing my body couldn't take that anymore. I had lost a lot of weight. I mean, it was, it was muscle, but it was just, I still wasn't healthy. I then turned over into um, drinking. And so I went spent about two years probably that again, working 16, 
20 hour days, I would get called in at three in the morning because my overnight person couldn't make it through the night for some reason. And I would at the end of the night, go and drink for a few hours, go hang out, eat some food. I usually sat at the bar working. I mean, that was the other thing. I was like, okay, I'm going to go get some food and drinks and just keep working. So I did not manage it in a healthy way at all. And it was kind of around that time when I left the that very hardcore job, transitioned into another job within hotels. They all of a sudden were like, hey, you can only work four days a week, 10 hour days. Like we're changing this whole concept. Never heard of in the hotel world. I didn't know what to do with my days off. But it was the first time I had time And that's when that download and that realization hit of, I'm not happy. Even when I got my time back in my hands, I wasn't happy. Um, So yeah, that's kind of where I was. I did never managed it well. It really was. I just went, worked, worked, worked. I went home and slept and I went right back into working out and working again. So that's, that's wild. I I can't imagine. I mean, I could try to imagine uh, working all those hours. That's, that's nuts to me. I I really resonate with the piece of not knowing what to do with like your time off. I I think a big part of my journey in entrepreneurship and being a workaholic is finding ways to create more work for myself to stay in my comfort zone, you know? Oh, I know that a hundred percent. I've already been dealing with that the past two days. (laughs) Yeah. You know, uh, that's something I'm struggling with right now, to be honest as well, because I find myself, I was thinking about in bed last night being like, man, I, I haven't played recently, you know, like, sure. I played, like you could look at like going out surfing. I, there's been a few sessions or, uh, some people ask me like, well, the hot, cold therapy you do with the, like, don't you enjoy that? I'm like, that's work, <laughs> you know, like that's for my mental health. Like, yeah, I enjoy it, but like, I wouldn't really say that's like fun today. I did two rounds of three minutes and I think the gym has it at 50 degrees water or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, the, all that to say, where was that going with this? So, um, 2022 is when you said you started to listen to podcasts and things like that. Yep. Yeah. 2022. It's, so, all right. That was about two years ago. Was there a specific podcast or how'd you come about it? Like, word, uh, tell us the story. Yeah. Uh, so, Lori Harder, funny mm-hmm. enough, earn your happy. I, Never had listened to podcasts. I really didn't know anything about it. So I just went on and I was like, well, what's like going to pique my interest based on where I'm at, like where I know I'm not happy and I saw Earn Your Happy. And I was like, okay, like let's start listening. And I was the person, I probably went back a couple episodes, listened to one, something resonated and I went back all the way to the beginning and I started listening from there and just was like nonstop. I would go on walks. I really wasn't back into working out quite as much then. So on my walks, I would just play the podcast and listen in. And I started resonating more. Uh, She brought Lindsay Schwartz on from Powerhouse Women during that time. So then I started listening to her podcast and it introduced me a few other people. And in the midst of that is when it hit me, okay, hotels is not where I'm supposed to be. And then again, I was like, well, what, what is then? And I kind of sat around and it was really sad I, when I finally started looking for a new job and it was outside hotels or something completely different than I had ever done. My directors and my bosses were like, yeah, you were done with this job like a year ago. You could have been looking for another job or doing something different. I go, well, then why didn't you tell me this if I was good enough and too good or whatever it is, you know, expectation wise. And they're like, well, we like you. We wanted to keep you. So until you figured that out, I was like, thanks. Thank you so much for that. Um, But so what I did is I ended up going to the powerhouse woman event that Lindsay Schwartz put on. Once I found out she hosted an event, I was going completely by myself. I knew nobody there. It was in, it's held in Scotts, Scottsdale, Arizona every year. I didn't know anyone didn't even know what to expect, to be honest. It was completely out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And the week before, I actually sat down for dinner with my husband one night and I went, well, I'm supposed to be going to this event, but I don't think I'm going to go anymore. And he looked at me and he said, no, you're going. Mm-hmm. He goes, I, I'm going to put you on the plane. You're going to go. He said, because I know when you get there, it's going to be worth it. And that is the catalyst, I say, that really got me introduced to this world and got me excited for what opportunities are out there that I even never even knew about. Um, Not only business and entrepreneurship, but just also the opportunities for me 
and the relationships I've been able to form and the people I've met. I mean, we wouldn't even have met mm -hmm. if I hadn't gone to that event because Charity Gibson, shout out to Charity, like that's where I met her was at that event. And then she recruited me into the job and then we've kind of been back and forth and she's so supportive on a whole personal level and that journey too, that I would have never known about this world if it wasn't really for being introduced and going all by myself to this event. Yeah. And I think that's so powerful to go to these type of events or experiences or journeys by ourselves. Because when we go with a loved one, whether it's a friend or a partner or whatever, it, that's, that can be a crutch for a lot of us. So I definitely agree with that. At what point did more of the mental health, whether it's like breath work or other type of modalities start to enter into your consciousness? Uh, probably around December. Uh, so December of 2023. So just when this is being recorded four months ago, I went to that event I mentioned that where I was introduced and it was, it was an amazing event. It was a lot jam packed into one because in one day we went walk through breath work, inner child work, Reiki. I'm blanking out. There was like two other modalities. There was like a rewiring, um, uh, method thing, and it was a lot in one day, but it also was a sneak peek into each of them. And all the individuals who were putting on and speaking were actually someone I could work with. So I connected, like there was two of them that I really felt drawn to. And that's when I started listening to like the energy and started really listening to my body of where I was being pulled and who I connected with on a deeper level. So when that happened, I came back. Didn't really do anything with it, but I was like, I need to explore this more. And in January, one of the ladies that I met when I was there at that event actually was part of this. Um, it's called Breath Fist Club. So they do it every morning. Bre breath Fist. Breath. Yep. Breath Got Fist. Cool. Yeah, so nice. early in the morning, it's like 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific, like someone they host it and it's been an everyday thing. And I was messaging, we had been talking on voice notes, just back and forth. And she was so supportive and she does Reiki, she does breath work, all the stuff. And then all of a sudden she went, Hey, I'm part of this club. And I went, okay. And she's like, would you be interested? They do 30 days free. You are wanting to do breath work more, but I know you're trying to save some money. Would you be willing to try this out so that you can experience breath work on a deeper level? And it's interesting because how they do it is it's short. So it's like 30 minute calls and they only do like the short 10, 15 minute breath work sessions daily. But for the new moon and the full moon, they do the longer, real full breath work sessions. Um, it's all virtual. And so I went through, I think it was the new moon that was happening right when I joined and it was pre-recorded. So I went and watched it. I don't even know what happened to me. <laughs> I just went through the whole thing. And I mean, I just went all in. I was like, I need to try this. And I can't just give, I can't half-ass it. I have to give it my all. Um, and I came out of it with clarity I had never had before. I realized I was supposed to go to Bali with this girl who had introduced me to the whole thing. I couldn't go anymore. I knew I just, something hit me and was like, nope, you can't go right now, Catherine. I started questioning some of the other decisions I'd made. Was this job right for me? I I'd never experienced such clarity um, and intensity of the breath work. So I actually did it for another 30 days and kept doing it, um, just the little short sessions. And that's when I started realizing and started listening and my discernment's been better. Just the, like I said, the clarity that came out of it. I didn't realize that's what breath work was until I actually started doing it. And so I've learned a lot of those modalities. I can't really have a judgment on and I can't really, I don't talk too deeply about unless I've done it because you don't know until you do it and mm. you give it your all too. You can't just do it and give your 50% and say, yep, this is what happened for me. Yes, it worked. No, it didn't. I've learned like I have to give my all and see what happens. Um, so that's kind of how I got introduced. And then she just looped me in. And she's the individual that I was in Oregon with last week for three days. And for the first time in my life, for three straight days, I was just receiving. And I've never done that before through breath work, through some energy work. Um, we went to like a little retreat center. We went just hiking and out in nature, just listening to water, listening to the sounds, the trees. I mean, I've never experienced anything like it. And so I have a lot to thank her for because she's finally introduced me to this whole other world and way of living. 
Yeah, it's it's really wild to me because I started down uh, started going down this path in 2019 and when the lockdowns hit, you know, with respect to all the devastation that it caused, I think a lot of us did appreciate the opportunity to slow down and the stillness. And I I could feel it and I could sense it even in 2020 early on that it, this was all going to be forgotten, but I was like trying <laughs> to not manifest that because our thoughts and our feelings create our reality, our personal reality, at least. So, um, yeah, by 20 late 21, especially early 22, you could are we all saw it. it was like everyone forgot and we just went faster and harder than ever. Here we are two years later in 2024 and with the emergence of AI and the, all these different startups and companies and, it feels like things are faster and more hustle culture than ever before. I see you nodding your head. So you, you sense that as well. Oh, yes. It's I thought it was going to get better and it didn't. Yeah, it got, <laughs> it got worse. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I, I'm so stoked to hear that you had that experience in Oregon and uh, stillness and being with the elements and all of that. I did something in 2020 a couple of times, I think maybe 2021 as well called a soul wander. So as opposed to a vision quest, which is traditionally, I believe it's three days, uh, no food, no water a lot of times. And it's just you out there in nature, straight up vision quest. Soul wander, uh, this guy, Tim Corker, and he's been on my podcast. He, he uh, led us through two different soul wanders. And the idea is getting lost intentionally for three to five hours and leaving your phone, your journal, everything else behind. And it's like a little... A glimpse. It's a little taste into that. One thing I like as well is I, I micro microdose with psilocybin. And I always notice almost every single time, like the, the days that I am microdosing, it's just everything becomes so much more clear. And it's not like I'm tripping or anything like that because it's such a small amount, but it's just that little bit can be enough to really help me to slow down in addition to everything else that we're talking about, whether it's breath work or the hot, cold therapy. Speaking of breath work, what's that? No, I just said, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's all great stuff. So uh, breath work, you mentioned like going deep, giving it your all. I notice this being a breathwork facilitator all the time. And I tell people as well, like you have your, your foot on the gas, you know, if you want to go deeper, you can go deeper. And I try and encourage people to go deeper, but I also know from my own experiences doing breathwork, there's just some days and sometimes I show up and I'm like, yeah, I'm just kind of going through the motion. I'll just, I don't have it right now to go deep. When you say like go deep in that one time you first experienced like the full power of breath work. Can you walk us through the style of breath work that you were being uh, led through? Uh, yeah, it was the three parts. So fill your stomach, fill your chest, and then let it out. Um, they were really good about guiding through as fast as you can. So trying to do as fast as you can, but understanding, especially it was my first time or anybody who's newer to it, you might not be as fast. Um, I've really only done full, full, a full session three times. So that was my first time back in February. I did one in the midst and then just recently when I was in Oregon and that was my first one like in person. And it was interesting because I've never done it like around anyone's. I didn't even know if I was doing it correctly. I assume so because <laughs> I was getting the clarity and some of the things they say, you know, that happens during breath work where you'll get really cold or you get really hot. Um, you'll get tingly. My hands do the thing like they'll cramp up actually is what happens for me. And she said, I actually do it really well. I kept the breath because I feel like, and this might be just part of the experience. I must forget about it and don't even know if I'm doing it anymore during part of it. But I do think that's the whole dropping into the subconscious at that point that I don't really know if I still am doing it, but that's the type. So it's the three breaths. Um, and it's just at the speed as fast as I can. Uh, and I think that's where I drop in a lot lower is if as long as I'm pushing myself, it's always tough there those first few minutes. But once I get past that, it's not easy, but it's easier. You don't think of it quite as much. 
Yeah. A lot of times uh, with breath work, I feel like I'm at the top of a roller coaster and I'm just like in that resistance and I'm like in this little like mental chatter. And then finally, like I'll get to a point of like letting go. And then it's just, whew, it's just like the journey from there. And like you said, I experienced that too, where uh, it just the circular breath and it's like a wave. And it just starts to do it on its own and start to come out of my body a little bit and able to see things from different perspectives. You mentioned extreme clarity like we're what exactly was the uh, to the extent that you feel comfortable sharing of course but like what exactly to the extent were these different energies these emotions that are coming through like did you have a massive release through shaking or crying or anything like that uh mostly crying and i didn't know where it was coming from because even with the clarity at first it was in the moment i was just crying and I just, I had no idea why, where it was coming from. Um, and then the realization kind of afterwards of like, I really released all this stress and all the anxiety. Um, a lot of it for me, especially in that moment was I had made the decision to leave my job, but no one really knew that yet. I hadn't told my boss. I hadn't told my parents. And this, I am, I am such a people pleaser that I hold in so much of how I feel and I stress out and get anxious to have to tell someone with the fear of letting them down or the fear that I'm failing. I'm a failure <laughs> in their eyes. And I didn't realize how much that had balled up. Um, because after that happened, it wasn't easy, but I realized that's what was holding me back. And I finally could verbalize. That's where a lot of that, I, I get tight in my chest. That's where a lot of my energy and stress and anxiety sits is in my chest. And so I didn't feel it released completely, but there was this weight almost that came off of, oh, that's what that is. So now when I start to feel a certain way, I know I can process it a lot better knowing, okay, it's, I'm fear of letting them down. I fear I'm going to fail. I fear flying. <laughs> so I've learned even to listen um, and know when I'm starting to get really anxious about that. But that's where a lot um, of that clarity came from. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, it's a it's a wild journey for sure. The different energies and even traumas and stories that we hold on to in the body and how we can let this go. When you mentioned process, like now you have a way of processing uh, what does that look like for you? I have to get quiet <laughs> and I have to get still, which is a big thing that has come about recently is realizing and stillness is where I actually can process a lot of my emotions better. I am a verbal communicator and a verbal processor. So that's where I do usually process a lot of the things, but I've realized I need to sit back. Um, I do deep breathing a lot uh, where I sit back and I'll count in for three, hold for four, let out for five to just kind of re kind of regulate everything in my system when the anxiety uh, and the stress comes up. That's been the biggest thing. And then I do journal. So if it's very difficult emotions um, and I can't drop into breath work or I can't do something else, I'll write and just sometimes it's just getting the thoughts and the emotions that are up in my head or in my body. It's just getting it out. Um, mm -hmm. And that's one way I also process through it. It's amazing. And all these tools like new ish for you. And yeah, it's all from stemming from that one event you went to just four months ago. Is that right? Yes. This that's is literally, this is all new. <laughs> Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, proud of you. That's that's awesome. I mean, I, I was the same way when I started. I was just like all in and committed and just like, wow, there's this whole other world. This is amazing. Where was this? Now, the topic I want to kind of segue into here is bridging the gap or integrating mental health into business and workplace culture. What are some of your thoughts and how you see we can, as leaders in business, integrate more mental health in corporate specifically? It's a, it's a line to balance and not in a bad way. I think it's something that they, right now, corporations don't do a lot of these larger, larger businesses all the way down to even small business. Um, you don't see it a lot. You're seeing it more. I do know 
it's starting to come about. They're bringing in life coaches. They're bringing in breathwork facilitators to hold these opportunities for those who, the staff that work in these businesses. I think it's huge because even in the midst of everything going on at work, the opportunity to step away and go sit for a few minutes to take a true break for 10 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, again, the clarity and the create really the creativity that comes from when you can step away from where you are, when you can move, you're not just sitting at a desk all day. I don't think many people realize the importance of that. And it's not even that they're doing it on purpose. I don't think generations before us and ahead of us realize the importance of us taking that time and moving and allowing opportunities to listen in and like the and communicate the ideas that we have. Um, I struggled with collaboration. I, I never spoke up. I had ideas. And I always said I was held back from it because I didn't feel like I could speak up and say something. I I mean, you know this example. I'll give the prime example of back in January when we met. Mm -hmm. There was supposed to be this whole breathwork facilitation for anyone who wanted to join. And it was free to anyone. And no one showed up. And I had someone come up to me within the company and go, I don't think anyone's ever going to be interested in this. It's just not, none of them are going to do it. That's not what we do. And I'm like, that. It's okay, but maybe you need to be introduced to it. It's something that is eye-opening because from breath work, from any modality that you use, it sparks the creativity and sparks this I, like opening to other ideas and avenues that we can go down. Um, I don't know what it's going to look like, to be honest, with the corporate world. They're just now accepting any type of mental health coaches, therapists. I mean, it's so, things that have been around for so long are just now being offered and as opportunities, but we're starting to see this surge of breath work and just other mental health opportunities come out. Uh, I think it's important, but I don't know what's going to happen in the next few years. I think it's going to take time because it is the older generations I think are struggling to fully understand and try. Yeah, thank you for sharing. It's it. The, I just think of it as like the waters are so muddy right now, you know, because we have a ton of corporations and tech companies that have been leading the charge for years. I mean, I remember going to Google and going to the Salesforce Tower when it was being built. I was going to say 10 years ago, but it wasn't that long ago. Um, maybe it was six or seven years ago, but I had seen their meditation rooms and all this type of stuff. And I didn't know much about it back then. And I, I still, in terms of like using specific companies as examples, Salesforce or Google or even LinkedIn, I know a lot of them really talk about the benefits and put programs out there for their employees, but I don't know if they're just checking the box, right? Like there's this guy, Scott shoot. I forget the name of his book, but I've had him on the pod and he left LinkedIn and he was working at LinkedIn. I don't know. I'm just making up a number at least 10 years, I would say. And he developed and created their mindfulness pro program. And it's really fascinating to hear how he started that from the ground up like years ago. So there's certain like, corporations and companies that have been offering this. Again, I've never been on the inside of one of those companies. So I couldn't say if it's checking a box, like, oh, we're doing the right thing. What I feel in terms of the landscape of mental health right now is there are a lot of uh, companies that are just jumping on the bandwagon to check the box, but they don't actually care. That's the sense I get. And then the other side of it is there's a whole, there's tons of industries just like the promotional products industry that are just putting their head in the sand. You know, I came from 
the promotional products industry. I had a personal brand of Swag Sam. Like, you know, I'm very much entrenched in this industry and I know it very well. And to your point, that's where we met and I was supposed to do a breathwork thing. I was so encouraged by the PPAI conference that they had a mindfulness room and no knock to our industry, by the way, I'm just stating facts here. <laughs> that's all it is. But, uh, I was so stoked that they had a mindfulness room and PPI, you might know this, but uh, cause I don't, do you know how many attendees they have? 8,000. Yeah. I was going to say like 10,000. So Between yeah, 8,000. 8, yeah. yeah. It's 8,000 people at this conference. It's like a week after CES, the big tech conference. And it's a $26 billion industry with a capital B billion. So they had a mindfulness room. So I was like, oh, this is amazing that they have a mindfulness room because I've gone to a few other conferences in the past few years that have like incredible mindfulness rooms. Well, I went to the mindfulness room at two different occasions during this conference. One, it was extremely hard to find and it was tucked away in the corner. Two, both times I went there, no one was there. Crickets uh, it could not care less. Meanwhile, SHRM, which is the Association for HR Human Resources, uh, I spoke at one of their conferences last summer or fall, and they had a breathwork facilitator come in offering breathwork journeys like what you were talking about. I've also gone to a solar company and myself and about four other facilitators did a breathwork journey for about 100 salespeople uh, in a solar company. 95% of them were men, if not higher, and more than half of them had puddles of tears in their eyes by the end of it or at some point in it. So it's like kind of all over the place. And to your point, if like a company is kind of like, Mm, we're a little old school. I don't know if our leadership is going to go for this. It's really hard. And especially right now that the trend, because businesses follow trends, the trend is on AI. You know, it's like uh, mental health. It's not really important right now. But then you look at the statistics and the data is in and it shows that our mental health is worse than ever before. So I don't know. Um, I, I hope something changes, you know? Yes, I, I agree. It's I mean, being in it for 10 years and newly out of it, it's it's crazy because even my eyes were not open until I went outside of my job and outside of the company I was working for and realizing this and you go back into it. I've even introduced them to some people I've met in the past, over the past six months. I was like introducing them like, hey, what about this person? And they're like, oh, we'll talk to them. Just don't know if that's going to fall in line to insurance or to what we can offer. And I'm like, well, I just want to open the door. Like, it's just, it's, it is a battle. It's like some are more accepting and some are just like heads in the sand. <laughs> like you said. Yeah, totally. And you know, I launched this uh breath club, which is designed for busy professionals. And it's kind of similar in some ways to your breath fist club, uh, not knowing anything about breath fists, just the fact that you brought it up, which I would love to unpack that. And I, I, I had like just big dreams. I was like, Oh, the breath club's going to be huge. Right. And it, to your point, like it's been a rude awakening being like, wow, like sure. People will bring me in to speak to like crack them open and lead them through a little bit of meditation and mindfulness and talk about mental health in the workplace. But when it comes to like a low cost solution that's way less expensive than the speech, and eh, well, I don't know if we want to offer that. So it's so easy it is literally so easy to address our mental health on a daily basis. I'd love to hear a little bit more about how the breath fist has been helping for you and what it offers to people. Yeah. So I've paused for this past month, to be honest. Um, and that was just a, I was not making time for myself. I've actually had to dive back into it now that I've left the company, but it was a rough four weeks for me. And I really had no time. I would wake up at 5 a.m. and give myself 20, 30 minutes to eat, get ready. And then I was in meetings and getting things done. Wow. So I really didn't do it. It was yeah, it was just a lot of diving deep and going all day, um, trying to fit in times. So I did not, I, I spe specifically did not do it this past month because I knew I wanted to make sure 
I was hitting other things and the things I sprinkled in were like five minute opportunities of journaling and devotional and just those little things that I could fit. But when I was doing it back those first kind of month and a half, two months, it it was kind of, there's two pieces, two parts to what I like. I really like about it. One, it's every day and you don't have to be there every day. They now do it seven mornings a week. Um, like I said, 6 a.m. Pacific time, 9 a.m. Eastern time makes it a little harder because I'm central. So it was like 8 a.m. So kind of middle of when I would be working, but it was 30 minutes, a quick, everyone comes in and it's like community. I mean, it normally was about the same amount of people. It was not a crazy number. I think a lot of people they recorded and kept them up for 24 hours. So if you missed it and you wanted to still listen in and go through the breath work, you could. Um, that was nice because sometimes I wouldn't be able to do it in the morning. I do it in the evening, um, but it kind of was a community and it really was like they brought you together and most of them knew each other. Um, there are multiple different facilitators. Uh, so one of my friends that I, who introduced me to it, she did it once a week as well. And it was nice seeing the different ways people did it. They all did the three part breath. But they all had kind of their different music and different ways that they guided you through. Um, they also focused on different things. So the week of Valentine's Day was a very big focus on love. And that's kind of what you were working through. Uh, but some of their focuses was what they were going on in their real life. So it was kind of cool. You got to know them, the facilitator, and maybe what they were going through. And you're realizing you're not alone that they might be going through something similar to you were, or you'd been through something similar before. And then you got to kind of work through it together, even though it's virtual, it's not the same as being in person. It's still though brought that kind of community aspect to it. Um, and then the affordability. I mean, I don't remember exactly how much, I think it's like 90 something dollars a month. So just being able to drop in and do breath work whenever I wanted to for 30 days. And they offered the full moon and new moon as well, longer full sessions. Um, to me, it was unheard of. I had never seen anything like it before. And for me being new and newly introduced and really trying to find the modalities that worked right for me, it was a great way for me to experience all of that for a much more affordable rate. Yeah, I thank you for sharing. And it's so funny hearing you listen. Like That's exactly what my vision has been for the Breath Club. And it's yeah. so fascinating how uploads and downloads work. And a lot of times, like when one idea comes into the collective, like the reason why we'll see a lot of people do that independently is because it's come into the collective and we're literally downloading that from the collective consciousness. So it's interesting hearing you speak about that because everything you said about that is exactly what my vision is, except not once a day. Once a day, uh, it, like I do want to bring in more facilitators as well. And I think one of the most important things about breath work, which you spoke about, is the opportunity to share community and different themes and the opportunity to rewire the neural pathways in the brain to create new neural networks and work with the subconscious mind, like you alluded to. And that really is in the is the power. And I think exactly what you just laid out, that's how simple simple it is for a company to integrate mental health into the workplace culture. Just by offering something like that, that's a low cost solution. And it's like, hey, we're offering this to you. And in some ways that could be perceived as, you know, just doing it to check the box. Uh, but one thing I see with, I think it's the Calm app or maybe it's another one of, I think it's calm. Um, they offer like a business, uh, a business uh, enterprise type subscription or something like that, which is nice, but it's just like the recordings, you know, there's not, not the community level and the community in real time is so crucial. And, you know, at the end of the day, like you mentioned, you do a, a form of box breathing, essentially. That's what I do too. Like I find something that works for me and then I build that into my routine. And when I'm on, like I'm trying to get back onto this routine, mostly because of the weather recently, uh, but I'm, I'm back in my ocean plunges and now with my busy schedule, similar to you, relatively busy, at least it like this morning, I went straight from ocean plunge to a hit class. But what I really like to do is sit on the beach, do five minutes of activation breath work, then maybe some alternate nostril breathing or Kriya Pranayama, and then let that uh, funnel into some meditation and 
jump into the ocean, you know, and for me, I know that works and there's so many different types of breath work. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, anything else on breath work before we switch topics? I don't think so. I'm just excited to dive back into it again and learn more about it too. Now that I have more time on my hands to see what other modalities there are that I can start incorporating because cold plunging, that is another thing I I want to oh. start doing on more of a consistent basis. So <laughs> it feels so good in what you're talking about with the working out or uh, working out earlier. I'm just recently getting into hit and I've always had this story throughout my life that like I just get sore from workouts. So I try to stay away from too intense workouts and I'm like, man, I must be getting stronger because I haven't been that sore. But this past uh, Saturday when I went to the hit class, today's what, Tuesday, I didn't make the time to do a cold plunge afterwards. And what I have been doing is like cold plunging right afterwards and doing hot cold therapy. And I've been so sore. So you better believe I took my bike and went to the gym and sat in that cold plunge for as long as I could. And I feel great right now. But yeah, the cold plunge is it's just such a great act for your uh, just your mental fortitude and your ability to surrender and accept the present moment to find stillness. And then the science backs it up as well with the vagus nerve and everything else. So that's great. All right. Last thing. So you're getting into entrepreneurship now. Tell us a little bit about what's what that entails. I know you're day two, but like, what are you working on? Uh, lots of different things. Ideas are coming at me from every direction. So I'm kind of really right now is focusing in on what do I want to do? Where what what makes me happy? Where's that passion? Where do I feel purpose in everything? I am a lover of events. I believe wholeheartedly that events are what can put you on the map. They are what can really transform you and be the catalyst for some big transformations. And I think it's because a lot of it for me has stemmed from that. That's how I was introduced to the world of entrepreneurship and women entrepreneurship and development. I was introduced to all the different modalities of my all the inner work that you can do. Um so now I'm figuring out a few different avenues and paths I can take, one being event strategy. I love helping people work through taking the ideas that are up here in our heads and actually putting them down and into action and creating the event that they are dreaming of and thinking of and making sure it's aligned with their why. Why are they doing what they're doing and how can they take the ideas, their why, and bring it into something that everyone can experience and be impacted by? And then also being the person who can help it. Like actually, like if the host of that event needs help and doesn't want to do everything themselves, I can be the one to do it. So I kind of have two different ways. They can be combined, of course. I can help you strategize and put an event on, but I also can just help with the strategy or just help with actually putting the event on as well. And I've had a few people who are interested. So it's exciting to see that. I have like my first coaching client, which I didn't think would happen for years to be uh -huh. honest uh -huh. i but someone in that sat down with me on a call and was like i want to hire you I'm like awesome what for <laughs> like, i just want to i want to talk to you like bi-monthly twice a week once a week i said okay let's talk more but it's i've also started opening up to those opportunities and to the ideas and i've surrendered into what i think needs to happen. And this is how it needs to be because I'm not making a stable income anymore like I was with my job. And I've had to just surrender and be like, the universe is going to give me whatever it is in the timing that I need it. And I have to be okay with that. And so slowly things are falling into place by kind of letting that go. So that's where I'm at. I'm in still a lot of the very beginning stages, but all the exciting stages too, I feel like. Yeah, I'm stoked for you, Kat, because just uh, hearing you talk and just connecting with you the few times that we have, like, it, you know, you you know what you're talking about. You know what you're doing. You walk the walk and you go all in. So I'm super stoked. But most of all, why I think this is going to be a big success for you is there are so many healers that want to put on their own events and retreats and don't know where to start. So like 
it, you're walking into such a good niche to do it on your own. And I'm uh, going to going to reach out to my friend Gretchen. She's a uh, similar and I'll make a connection to uh, her for you guys. You guys can connect, but I believe she's doing a uh, James Nestor's uh uh, retreat right now and he's the author of the book breath but she is a similar story where she's uh was working in corporate doing events and now she's kind of uh, gone her own path and doing more mindful spiritual type events and it's just it's so needed you know um i i saw someone talk about or i met someone last year to talk about trova trip have you heard about trova trip no yeah, it's it. I looked into it. I did uh, some of uh, what they said, but I never followed through with it because you need like, uh, I don't know, I got distracted with other things and it wasn't a priority, put it that way. Um, but basically, they plan the event for you. It, it's worth looking at from like a competitor analysis because I know they're marketing towards um like mindful and spiritual yogis and breathwork facilitators, right? All the things, right? But yeah, uh, end of the day, like there's an opportunity for everyone. We're all going to feast here. And I love that you have your affirmation and you remind yourself of that because that's, that's the most important thing. I mean, going deep in the subconscious mind has really taught me at least like how much our thoughts and feelings create our reality. And it's like when we feel like our head is banging against the wall or we're swimming upstream. And I say this because it's the advice I need too. Mm -hmm. that's when we got really do a true evaluation of how am I feeling on the inside? What are my thoughts? Because if we're not conscious and intentional of those things, then we're manifesting the wrong thing because we are the co-creator of the reality that we're experiencing. So with that cat, Thank you so much for coming on the pod and your podcast is called imperfectly impactful <laughs> impactful that's it yeah. i knew it was another i am perfectly impactful i will put a link to your podcast in the description with this any final words for the listeners no just thank you so much for having me on here i have not gotten to share this part of my journey as much so this was fun to actually dive in deeper into what i've done in the inner work side and share it with everyone so thank you <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you for leading the charge because, I mean, this is what we need more people stepping up and being vulnerable and honest and willing to take that leap of faith. You know, for not everyone is it going to be through entrepreneurship, the leap of faith, but the leap of faith into diving into the depths of our psyche. That's what's most important and honoring our needs. Sometimes that will look like entrepreneurship, but you know, I don't really drive with Gary, Gary V's advice. And I don't think everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur and a lot of people fall on their face. So I wouldn't say that's the thing to do. I would say, take your time and stillness. And most of all, be, be honest with where you're at, you know? Thanks so much, Kat. Thank you, Sam. See you soon. See ya.